Okay, today what I'm going to do is show you how to set a part up in Sheet Cam and uh, create your toolpath on that. This is going to be a pretty short video, but uh, kind of straight to the point. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Sheet Cam here. I'm going to let it load up, and uh, right away you see it kind of looks a little foreign. And what we've got here on your options, let's set up a job option and then this is your size of the sheet or scrap or whatever you're cutting let's say we've got a 24 by 24 piece and uh, I'm gonna say okay so zoom in and out you just scroll with your mouse wheel same thing like anything else and the grid options are right here so you uh, right click right there and you hit grid options and that gives you your grid size which you can change that to one by one um, show the rulers your bump increments that that makes it uh, how far when you hit the uh, arrow keys how far it actually goes so it's nice to have those low so you can really get the space in between your parts that you really want usually I I'm anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch on that and this is your uh, angle and your angle keys and what that does is when you're nesting your parts in that is the degree of which when you hit zero or the minus button it will go five degrees either way and you can change that to one degree where you could really get down with it so I'm going to hit OK on that now how to uh, after you've created a DXF part I got several on here you're just going to right click here new part you want to import a, uh, a part into this drawing, yes. And then I'm going to say any of these spring assist D. Okay, that'll work. And then this is where, where the scaling is always going to be an inch, or if you're using metric, you can use metric, but I always use inch. And this is where you want to put it at, where you want to import it at on the sheet, which usually I import right here and just say okay so there's our part there so we notice we have two holes and an outside now there's several different ways to set this up if if you want to cut it all at the same rate and uh, you want to cut this hole here you want to come around this just like that and you want to do that at say 85 inches a minute 85 inches a minute and 85 around that's simple all you're gonna do is hit operations and then you're gonna go to the inside offset and then what that's gonna do this is your arc links your lead ins and lead outs and point one we'll just we'll just use just like a point one for now because I know that hole over there is small but that is the good thing I'll show you here in a second why I was telling you the lead in lead outs um, all this this is uh, we've got it on eight gauge so you select your tool right here so whatever you're cutting so it was say quarter inch and we've got that at 85 inches a minute already so that's great so the last thing to do is select the layer and when you import it in it all imports as one layer so if it 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 recognizes the holes and it's going to cut that anyway see so your cut path keep parts together or you can go all inside first it it really doesn't matter and hit OK and see that already has messed up on us so obviously I wasn't so that's a good <laughs> so I can show you there I did it wrong so this is great so you just double click there so inside offset was wrong because you can see right here it actually went on the outside of all your stuff so you want that to be on the inside I'm sorry you need an outside offset and that's on the outside of the part so you just double click right here and then just hit outside offset okay and then see now it's changed everything now you're inside on that one inside on that one so you are gonna we do have up here there are the uh, this is all of your your things you can toggle this all on, on and off your show uh, I usually have most of those on definitely the start points because you can look and you can see where it's actually going to start so you know that it's going to start this is start one start two and then start three see it has it right there and then your start one is uh, right there when you get far enough out it'll show it 
but uh, and then and, and you can you can turn the path off as well but I like to keep that on too um, you can turn that off and you can actually see kind of where your path is actually going and uh, that is your offset so you're dealing with your uh, the width of your torch on that so uh, here is the uh, the true width of the part is right there so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna show you another way to do it so uh, and we'll go ahead and I'll set up another tool as well so let's say that whenever you're cutting quarter inch you like to go fast on the outside for speed but your holes you really want to slow down on those and say we want to cut those at 65 so all you're gonna do over here is you're gonna right click new jet tool and just name it as uh, as uh, you'll have your your tool number is right here so as you see over here t1 t2 t3 this will be t4 and we'll just say um, quarter inch holes okay and then uh, let's just say this is your feed rate is um, let's go 65 okay and then this right here your kerf width you can play around with that that is what it'll actually offset the torch to allow for your torch the material that it's blowing out so um, the pause at the end of the cut uh, point 0.3 you can change that to a point 0.2 I mean this is all just like the cut height and uh, the plunge rate the pierce height the pierce delay all of that is going to be taken care of on the uh, machine interface side so you really don't have to worry about that too much so we're gonna say okay so we've got quarter inch holes there so that's our tool for so let's go ahead and we're gonna delete this whole entire toolpath so I'm gonna delete that okay so how do you do that so what we're gonna do is say that's what this little C is up here you can select this and as you see that turns white that turns white that turns white so it actually you can select your holes on this so you select that shift select that regardless well actually I'm I'm doing it all wrong you can actually just hit this move to layer new layer and then it'll say a new layer you can just name it to whatever you want and then you can right click on that one move to layer move to layer 2 okay so now they're all red so now each hole we can identify so these two are on layer 2 this is on layer 0 okay so let's do our plasma operations and we want to start with the inside first so let's do a inside offset and as you notice here this is your torch and this is your material so it's pretty self-explanatory there so we're gonna do an inside offset and let's do it at the quarter inch holes we're gonna do that at fee rate 65 and a point one on that so we're gonna hit OK and I messed up again sorry layer 2 okay and then that's gonna go ahead and that is gonna get both of those in one so you can see where that is and you can you can uh, press and see if you want on this you can double click on this and let's see how far so 0.15 maybe it's gonna it's gonna let you on the lead ends it's gonna let you know where where you're gonna be at on that see so our lead in got a little longer but once you get so long it's not gonna let you come it won't let you come all the way all the way around it'll say you can't uh, do that and then it'll end up actually starting on the edge of the hole and you don't want that so uh, the closer you can get to that okay so so now we've got our first set of tool paths now we're gonna do our second set so same thing here and then we're gonna do an outside offset and it will be layer zero which is that sets the, the default this is on the the whole thing is set on layer zero zero as a default so whenever you import this part in it's always going to be set to layer zero okay so we're gonna say that's an outside offset and we want to do that at the quarter inch fast so we're at 85 inches a minute on that and usually you can go a little bit faster because on the uh, on the holes you want it to blow out as much because usually right there on your pierce point is where where you get the most uh, 
the most uh, there's a little build up there sometimes and that's where your bolt is going to hang up or wherever you're at so you want to cut your holes maybe a tad slower sometimes or if you don't really care about accuracy it it doesn't matter you can you can just go with those and make that a little bit bigger on that as well and that is another thing too on these holes is that like on this tool here let's go ahead and finish this up so we've got a lead in there and uh, it's going to be a nice part and if you want to change your start points on any of this you can see you just hit this start up here edit start points and you can literally start this part anywhere so if you don't like it being started here say you want to start it here or anywhere you can do that and all you got to do is this outside offset you can see that just click your toolpath over here and you can literally start any of these anywhere that you would like so as you see here you can uh, more or less anywhere so outside offset as well so if you wanted to start it there ramp into that corner you can do that as well it doesn't matter um, I usually just kind of go with the offsets but if you would like you could you could uh, if you're into speed or something and you didn't want it to travel very much you could start this right here and with our machine what it's gonna do is it's gonna come over here it's gonna cut this one first come here cut this one and then it won't even it's gonna have a rapid down because it remembers that anything within six inches circle it, it's gonna go ahead and wrap it down it's not gonna be the slow um, rapid on your head and uh, we'll get into that a little bit more later but uh, more or less anything within a six inch circumference I believe it is that uh, the head will go ahead and wrap it down so if you have a bunch of holes real close together the head on the torch is just gonna go bam 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 and uh, that's uh, you can do all that as well and it does have tab features and action points and all that I mean that's just something that you can get into and uh, once you get the basics of this program then you can uh, go ahead and explore those uh, more in depth but uh, as far as this part we're gonna be good and say okay so now we've got the part and we know that that's that's kind of what we want so we're gonna say alright I'm good to go on this part I wanna go ahead and uh, I wanna cut this whole sheet out so let's go ahead and uh, the nesting is right up here and that's what that is so uh, there you see that goes there so we're just gonna grab this thing and uh, I'm gonna bump it a little bit with the keyboard keys and say that's good so all you have to do is make sure that you just click on the part and then all you don't have to con hit control or not you just hit C and uh, you can do it that way and then your arrow keys your uh, your directional keys like I showed earlier um, I'll go ahead and delete that and I'll show you again so uh, if you hit uh, that right click on that and you go down to grid options there is your angle keys and that's what I'm talking about right here I just did my bump increments right there on that and I can even I can even get those down to point uh, zero one and then uh, point zero one and then when you hold the uh, you can really you can really get it close as you want so so let's go ahead and uh, we're still in the nest mode so let's go ahead and click on that hit C and uh, we're gonna hit the zero was my angle button so I'm gonna flip that all the way around a little too far there so uh, now you can see that's probably on this thicker stuff you probably want to stay right around in there okay so now we've got two parts on this so instead you can do it one of two ways you can either grab those both and hit C again and it'll copy them and you can put them there and it looks like we're not barely gonna have enough room um, so uh, there's there's a couple ways let's go up here and uh, let me exit out of that well oh, I've got them all over the place now okay let me uh, delete this one too you always want to kind of stay with your with your uh, your original here um, because sometimes it's if you delete your original sometimes it'll try to delete your copies and does some weird stuff so um, what we want to do here is uh, let's say that that uh, sheet was an inch wider just for uh, the sake of uh, the sake of this so we're gonna go to job options and let's do this 20 oops 25 and then 
we're still see you can do this and this is another thing that sometimes it doesn't do sometimes it'll say the origin is down here and it'll put your sheet actually below your parts but for a general rule I always do everything from this right corner because that is where your touchdown is going to be that is your x y x zero on everything so we're going to say okay all right now we can either do it this way and hit you grab both of them just hold the the left button down and, and drag and you can copy that and you can grab both of those there and uh, that looks like it's going to be just great and uh, you can do that one way or you can go let's delete that and I don't know why it's doing that but uh, it's going back to the same spot anyways alright so so now I'm going to do that same thing I'm going to drag over I'm going to do that now I'm going to hit that and then I array of parts so this is a way that you can uh, you can fit all of this to the material so it'll tell you and then your part spacing on it your X is say you want 0.13 and then your Y is 0.13 as well okay and then when you hit that fit to material it's going to uh, it's gonna just put it all on there so we're gonna say okay so it didn't necessarily do what I wanted it to do but uh, let me see so if you ever if this happens you just hit control Z so then you're back to square one so I know that 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 will go over here and then you can do this multiple multiple duplicate and what it does is it just it's gonna do this and then when you click that it's gonna keep on it's gonna just keep on doing this as well and this is gonna be just as fast on this stuff here I usually whenever I'm doing it I hardly ever do a raise because I'll just get me a tight group like like this and then I'll hit that I'll just drag over all of them and then hit C again and then you've got the same thing so uh, you know it's for some reason when I do that it's always taking me back to the original so that's something that uh, you need to watch out about but uh, anyways so we're gonna say that's good and uh, looks great everything right part spacing everything looks good on that so uh, we're gonna say that's good to go and uh, all you have to do from here is just hit post process and uh, we'll just save it to my desktop usually uh, usually uh, on the machine we're gonna have a file set up that uh, when you open that up in the machine it's automatically going to already be uh, looking for that part so we'll save it to that file so let's just say we're going to save it to this burn table file here okay and see it's always a tab file so I'm going to save that and oh evaluation limit reach so I'm on an evaluation even on this one but you get the gist it's uh, it's it's going to post process from right there and then uh, usually what I'll do is uh, whenever I'm doing these little scrap sheets or whatever when I post process like that I'm just gonna save it as a uh, drop is what I usually save it as and uh, and uh, that's just something that I that that we do out here for our scrap we just call it drop sheets so we save it as a drop and then we just overwrite that every time and then we also have sheets that we set up in here that uh, that uh, we can uh, that we go to for everyday parts that we run we set up sheets that are like uh, 5 by 10s 5 by 12s and and that's a good way to just set up your sheet numbers like sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 and then you write it down what the size is on a piece of paper and what's on that it's just a quick way of doing things here but uh, that's what it is so after we save that as drop tap it's gonna be on the uh, it'll be on the cut side and you'll be ready to uh, pull it in off of the cut side so uh, so uh, more or less you're gonna see this whenever you uh, load the g-code this is what that is this is a g-code file this is what it's doing and uh, more or less it's just it's just showing you right here and there is a uh, there is a simulate button on this I think it's I believe it's right here and it'll it'll kinda tell you if you wanna sit here and go through it you can hit it and and you can start it and well, it's not even going to let me do that, but you can start, yeah, you can see it right here, and it's going to show you what it's going to do, so we'll go ahead and speed through it. So, 
as you see, it's doing it's going to do all the holes first is what we've got going on here. So, if you wanted to though, there is a setup on this where uh so I'm going to stop that. Now let's go back to this uh either it's going to be right here on this quarter inch holes. Um, 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 um no, not right there. So, I'm going to go okay. And then I'm going to go to the first one here. We're going to click up here because this has got all the duplicates and then all the duplicates of that as well. So I'm going to click on this first one. So now that we've got that one selected, I'm going to say that it's on this uh, inside offset that on the cut path side. Okay, now it's got keep parts together. I'm just double clicking on that keep parts together. So I don't know why it's uh, why it's doing that, but you can also on this on this just this this basic stuff here. There is uh, like path rules. It'll have you can make path rules and all kinds of all kinds of stuff. I mean the this the uh, this program is is a lot more in depth. So. Uh, so um, it's got some stuff that I'm I'm not even really familiar with sometimes on it, but uh, this one is a, I don't have this one set up just like what's on the machine. So I've got it all set up on the machine to where you your parts do stay together. But uh, and then you noticed how it was kind of jumping around there. You can even uh, you can even even do this on this uh, on this cut path here. You can. Uh, you can make it where it cuts up or down or 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 over to the side you can see that so uh all inside first let's try that and see what happens all inside first we go that way close that out if I could that's not gonna let me there all right well anyways so at the end of the day it's really not gonna matter too much not unless you're wanting to grab part to part to part other than that you could uh, you could just take this and we'll go back into this go back into the nesting mode here right. and uh, let's just delete and then we'll delete I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so we're back to the first one. Well, okay, I don't want to do that. Control Z. All right, I want to. I'm gonna click on this up here, and then that's my original part there. So let's just. Uh, oh, okay. I'm on. The, I'm on nesting. So that's that is why I can't click on this. I'm sorry on the operations when you're on nesting you can move it around you can do everything but you cannot put a toolpath on there so that's one thing that you do need to remember that whenever you bring this part in it's got to be on this right here so uh, when we click on this you always need on this just view toolpath this little because you can't drag it around you can drag it around your screen like that but you cannot do anything else so that's something that like if you have it on the nesting up here you can move your part but you cannot adjust the tool pass you can't really do anything from here so you may get stuck at some point and not realize and then you look up and say oh well that's my that's my problem there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this I'm gonna, whoops sorry I'm gonna delete I'm gonna delete that and delete that and uh, go ahead and uh, Let's just do the uh, layer two plasma quarter inch. We're just going to do those at 85. That messed up on that. So that's the good thing about it is that you can you can literally just you can change it just right just like that. So uh, there it is. So we've got that, and then let's go ahead and uh, another path as well and then we're going to do the uh, outside offset and that'll be on layer zero and actually what we can do on that as well is just you can even take those layers too um, 
if we delete this and go up to here. Um, if you don't want to have the layers on this on this part here, um, the contour, it'll be somewhere in here. Yeah. There's somewhere in here where you can go ahead and just delete those layers if you don't want it. Or if you if you if you just say, man, I'm just tired of this, just delete it. New part. And I'm gonna import another one in, and that was spring assist D. And then we can open that up and bring it right into there. So it's there's limitless things that you can really do on this. So let's just go ahead and create that. And uh, we're gonna say outside offset um, zero. And then on our cut path, let's keep the parts together. Okay. So more or less right there. Usually what I do, I do this most of the time. Not unless I'm really wanting to get accurate on my holes. And if you're wanting to do that, um, you just cut the whole thing slower. Or with the, uh, if you if you want to walk off from it and you're not too worried about it, you can, you can do that. Or you can do it like we had it a while ago where it cuts all the holes first. And that, that will give it a little bit uh, better hole quality if you do that. But this, as long as your holes, if you're not worried about, um, if you're not worried about maybe just a tad bit of slop, which you can really, you can dial it down in your CAD file. Um, you can play around with that hole size on there and, uh, and get it just dialed right in. So if we wanted to... Uh, wanted to do that so now I'm I'm in I did click the nesting mode so uh, I'm able to uh, drag and bump it around so I'm gonna I'm arrowing up and arrowing over and then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do this pretty quick just all you have to you know no control you just hit C and then it copies it then we're gonna spin this one around okay I'm gonna say that's good and then we can do that multiple duplicate. You can come right here. That and that. And then we're done. So uh so then that's that's the other thing there too. And uh as you can see too on this now when we uh, when we simulate it it's going to uh, when you hit that simulation and you don't even have to do this you just hit start okay whatever so it's gonna come up it's gonna cut this hole it's gonna cut this hole and then it's gonna cut your whole part out I'll have to look more into contours as well to see uh, to see how to keep all those parts together but I'm sure there's a way to do it um, but now, as you see, you're you're cutting one part at a time, and you're moving from side to side. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of how this thing is going to work. So you can see when we changed our directions earlier in this in this actual deal here, our cut path. See, we've got it side to side. So you're going to cut side to side. So if you want to cut up and down, you can just change that to that, that to that, or let it kind of pick its own path. You can do that however you want to do it. Doesn't really make much difference. But okay, so we're done with that. I'm going to stop this and uh, well, I really like to see those tool paths, so I'm going to leave it in nesting mode. Um, so we know that that's good and you could fill this in with parts if you wanted to or whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, so we're done with this and uh, after that, I mean, it's real simple. I've drawn it out quite a bit just to show you a few things about this that you can do just as far as your start points and all that. Um, but uh, but it's really simple and fast just to how I did that. I mean, if you're just wanting to throw a, a part up there and cut it out, um, it's really simple to do. I mean, you just more or less import your part you're going to uh, apply the tool path and then copy it, copy it however you want to do it um, and you can also too if you want to uh, if you don't want to go and do this every time you can actually save 
you can you can save these parts in here where you can load them up. But anyways, we'll post process this and drop tap. And the reason why it's not why it's saying it failed is because I am on my uh, desktop computer on the inside, so I I guess I haven't purchased this, so um, it it doesn't matter. But then you're gonna post process that, and then you're gonna open up your uh, your plasma, and it's gonna say load G code or a load file and you're gonna load this drop file in there and uh, that code what is on that screen right here this right here is going to pop right up on there and then uh, you can go to cutting all you gotta do is find this corner you're gonna hit your X button on your controller and that's gonna zero your X and Y axis and then you're gonna hit Y which is going to uh, start your plate line and right when you hit Y, it's going to record this point right here. And uh, this is, by the way, if your sheet is on there crooked, and nine times out of ten, it's going to be. So uh, I always play to line everything that I do because I don't trust uh, trying to look at it and say that it's straight. So uh, and remember that this is all done wireless. So we're going to zero the sheet. You're going to hit Y, which is going to start your play to line, and it's going to record that first point. You're going to run over the computer. It's going to say, do you want to load the last, the saved one? It more or less saves every play to line before the other one. So if you have some kind of catastrophic crash or something like that, um, I don't know. It's just something that it does. And you're just going to hit no. You don't want to, you don't want to restore the last play to line. So you're going to start a new one. So we're going to hit going from the top, the beginning, you're going to jog your machine over come to here you're going to hit X which is going to zero out all of your uh, machine coordinates right here and then you're going to hit Y run over no I don't want to restore it then you're going to come over to this corner here wireless jog and come and hit Y and then so at that point you're going to see your depending on how much your sheet is turned on your table that is how much it's going to turn this baseline here so this whole code is going to turn sideways on your table um, and then from that point on from this point all you have to do is hit A it's going to run over to this first pierce point find it pierce it start cutting and uh, you're good to go all you're going to have to do is on these holes the uh, the pierce delay on these little ones what I would what I would suggest is to see how long it takes to pierce these little holes because uh, sometimes your height controller will uh, dive a little bit on these on these holes where it's so close and small of a hole so what I usually do is set your uh, your uh, height control um, to where it kicks in at uh, maybe one second or so so and then on these it's that's that's my general rule of thumb but uh, anyways that's uh, that's how it works Thanks for watching.